on to the Mike's Custom Garage. Here's a look at the engine cradle I got for the, uh, the Jetta. This should be a bolt-in unit for it to fit between the shock mounts. And where it will go is in between these shock mounts right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the motor mounts off the engine, put the, the new motor mounts that came with the kit on the motor, and then we're going to put the cradle in. And hopefully it won't be too bad. Three chin, 14 millimeter. I already loosened this one, I got one out. I'm gonna pick the engine up just a little bit more. Just like before, I had the back of the, the transmission held up by the lift and the front held by an engine hoist. Okay, this is what we had in there, and this is what comes with the kit. So it bolts up, it's the same. So we replace this with the new one. One side down, one to go. So I got the mount in place. It's got a bolt up there. It's got a bolt that goes through the frame into this uh next thing i want to do i'm gonna roll the frame forward see how close i can get it to these where it's supposed to be so i got the motor lowered down a little bit uh, i put the go jacks underneath all four wheels so i gotta move this thing around and we're gonna try to line this thing up we're going to try to roll it forward. Pretty close. I go over to the right. So we push it straight in. Of course, it's hitting, so it's not really wanting to. I'm sliding the whole truck over. And you can see we're pretty dang close right there. So I need to send it back. So I gotta send the back of the frame over to the left. All right. Okay, it looks like it needs to shift a little bit. So we're gonna pick it up just a little, try to shift this thing over. And with a whole bunch of ups and downs and lefts and rights and stuff, uh, this cradle is in, motor mounts are bolted up to it. Everything's sitting pretty good. Uh, we got to build a, gonna have to build a mount for the back. Not quite sure where, but obviously got room now here. So the engine's where I want it to be. I was concerned with the manifolds. This side here is still pretty tight. I'll have to do something with that. But it's clear, so. So as you can see, I got a eh, quarter of an inch. So not quite as much as I'd like. I'd like to get a little bit more than that. So we'll see what we can do. If I have to, I'll buy headers for it, but I'd rather not. I'd like to see if I can make these work. But well, at least the engine's in now. That's its final resting place. Now I can start figuring out 
where everything else has to go. Well, that's tomorrow's job. So that'll be it for today. We'll hit this again tomorrow. We'll start seeing what we gotta do to cut that fire to cut the firewall out and back to fit this thing in here. Last night we got the motor mounts in in the front. So now the engine's sitting where it's supposed to sit. The back I just have a chain wrapped around. Underneath the tranny, underneath the mount. That's gonna stay like that until I get this body down on and on the weight to see what my angles are so I can make a, a bracket for the transmission to be at the right height so that my uh, my, my angle on my drive shaft to be right. Uh, it's not far off right now, so it might be pretty close to that. I'm about three and a half, four degrees difference between the rear end and the transmission, so that's pretty good. Okay, from what I can tell, you can be from one to three degrees off, which we're pretty close. I got to move the motor and the frame over now. So I had to shift things around to get it to fit in where it, where it had to be. And we're going to move it to the center. And then we're going to move it forward and try to figure out how much height we're going to need to cut into the firewall to fit the uh, engine. So, first thing we're going to do is get the body lined up where it needs to be, pull it forward in the engine bay enough that I can drop it down and try to get a, an idea of where I need to cut. got things close to where they need to be it's definitely way too far forward right now what I'm gonna do now to get a better idea is I'm gonna measure from the frame the bot the frame mounts I have here to the body mount see how much further it needs to go down and I'll measure across the firewall and see how much room I have from there to go up so we grab a straight edge Okay, I got a level, so I can make the far level. And I'm looking at 12 inches. So 12 inches from the top of my distributor. I'll show you where that goes to. 12 inches from the top of the distributor puts me at, see now I need a pointer. Can't quite reach that far. All right, here we go. Brings me to about this body line. So my first cut is gonna be Probably right along that body line, right across here. We cut this off, down, and then, and then we'll figure out how far in it needs to go. So that's our first cut, so we're gonna start there. So looking at the back of the distributor, going straight up. It looks like somewhere, so I can get it right about here. So I'm going to cut further forward at these holes right here. And I'll take this, put this uh, heat shield out. So we're going to cut up, looks like about 12 inches. It's quite a bit.
but gotta do it. Gotta get this thing and give it some room. Well, might as well get the engine on it, get everything out of the way and start cutting and see what we have. So that's cut one of probably many. Let's say it's cut right to the frame. Did this with the air chisel because the cut wheel just wasn't quite getting enough. There's a double panel right here. So I air chiseled all that out, got it open. Now we can take a look. Uh, steering column right here. So the steering shaft will probably come straight through here, I imagine. Maybe more will come out. Maybe, I don't know. But this is the first cut. I'm sure there'll be more. But we'll get it fit in there. And we'll keep moving moving forward. Alright, so for first cut. I've got it down as far as I can. And back as far as I can. <clears throat> I need. Say center of that hole. The center of here, roughly seven inches. So I need to go back seven inches and down about five. So back seven, down five. As you can see, where we got a little bit of clearance still of the motor, but. We definitely gonna need some more. So I'm gonna go up five more and then back seven more. <clears throat> but you gotta put a lot of this engine dang right up there. Let's see, seven inches from here. Yes. Well. We have two to the engine, so we could probably do five. I want to have enough room there. We're fine width-wise. So we're gonna to have to come back till probably about here. And Say width wise, we look fine. It's gonna be interesting putting a gas pedal in here, that's for sure. We'll figure it out. Yep, same over here. Got plenty of clearance. What I'm thinking is, I'm gonna make a tunnel for this like you would in a van, something I can take out work on the engine, put it back in, because I really don't want to have to pull the body off every time you want to change the spark plug or change a wire or work on the vehicle. So I'll give it room, I'll make a tunnel, make a, make a cover for it that can come off from the inside and make it accessible. There's still a channel inside the rail that has to come out. This had the uh, fuel lines running through it. But obviously those aren't there anymore. Uh, got a little more cutting inside to do. So I'll have to set it back down to get that cut and then we'll have to go back on the other side.
Cut a few more inches out of the way. We'll have to set this thing down and we'll bring it back and see how we're doing. Okay, so we've picked the body back up out of the way. We've rolled the the frame outside. Now you can see pretty good. Everything's worse. That's where the mounts are supposed to be. Definitely a tight fit on this side, but it ain't much extra on that side either. So that's just where it's gotta go. So we'll put a, uh, we'll make them out once we have the body back on this. We're going to have to put the shock mounts where they belong. I'll measure them off of that Jeep. Make sure I give them the right place. So they'll be where they belong. Shocks obviously here, go right up. I got longer shocks for the four inch lift. So now that Everything's out of the way. I'm gonna drop this back down to a nice working height and take that five inches out of the dash. What I'm gonna do is cut it right at the seam here, just below it, all the way up, around, and down. Then we'll drop it down both sides and hopefully there's enough room there to get everything in there we need to. Okay, now it's fully open, right up to the bottom of the, the cow panel in here. It's right to the bottom of that, so hopefully we don't need to go any higher. That's enough room to fit the engine in, and we'll see. Maybe some of this stuff in here will come out too. We'll see. away from hitting and now it's hitting the transmission but we are clear of the motor at least so there's progress training's hitting so i'm gonna have to cut part of this hump out of here and see where that can lead to so we're down to about three inches from touching what i have going on is the front of the tunnel is hitting the transmission so I got to cut some more of that off and the floor is just about touching the exhaust so I'm going to cut a little more of the bottom of the floor out so the exhaust is clear uh, I got to do that on both sides so we're going to cut that out and then we'll see where we're at yeah it's a mess but it's in 
got about a hand, probably four inches above the throttle body. Not sure if that's gonna be enough. If it ain't, I'll have to cut up into the fire, into the uh, cowl up here. It is what it is. If I have to do it, I have to, I'll make it happen. Uh, everything else looks good. I got plenty of room around. Uh, still kind of tight right here putting oil in. Uh, maybe we'll find a better way. I don't know. Oops, that light's a little bright back there. But it is in, it's tight. We'll have to make some more adjustments, make more room. But I'm clear now here, I'm clear here, and I'm clear on the other floor over there. So we're all clear. It's bolted down here, just hand tight. But it's bolted, the body's on the, on the chassis now. It's, so as you can see, just hand tight, but it's there. Concerns, uh, front fender. Might do a little bit of adjusting on that, make a little more room there. I got enough room in the back of the fender, the front's a little tight. Say it's sitting on its own right now. Backs look pretty good. I got probably three and a half, four inches on both sides. I'll make sure it can't go any closer. So I'm really not gonna go off roading with this thing. So I'm not I'm mostly gonna be driving it around in the road on the streets. I think what we're gonna do back here is I'm gonna cut some more of this out and put a fuel cell in here. So what I might do is just fill it in up to the bar and then go from behind the bar and put a fuel cell down underneath here. Well, that's probably the best place to put it. We'll see. So yeah, now that it's on the frame, the frame fits. I'm really not looking to get it running yet. I want to get it painted first. I want to know all that's done. I want to take the frame, I want to get the frame painted, get that done. Then start Mickey Mouse and getting all the stuff to fit. Because I really don't want to put all this together and take it all back apart. So I'm thinking do it once and be done with it. So there you have it. Next we're going to do is start getting this, the quarters and the roof and the fenders sanded like the doors and the trunk and hood are. And uh, now to trim that fender. That's all right. We'll get a little more room that way if it, hit, it won't hit at least. Cause you know hitting a bump somewhere I think it's gonna hit. All right, let's get this thing ready to start sanding. Now that the engine's in the car, it's sitting on the ground, I wanna get the body sanded and ready for paint. My thought on this is that I can always do any extra body work in here after the car's painted. I'm gonna to have to, I don't wanna take this thing on and off 500 times to make sure everything fits and take it all back apart. So we're gonna do it this way. I'm gonna paint the outside of the body, I'm gonna put it up on the lift. We're gonna take the engine back out, get the frame ready for paint, paint the frame, and then put the engine back in with everything painted. And then we'll start to hook up all the wires and get everything hooked up. We should be fine otherwise. So today I'm gonna, to, I got the roof sanded already. I'm gonna sand the fenders and the quarters and the back panel. And get all this ready for paint. We gotta still get the windshield pulled on it. So I get the windshield pulled out. I'm gonna leave the back window in only because I'm not sure I can get that molding. Uh, glass guy said the front windshield comes with the molding, so that should be fine. And I had two chips in the glass, so I want a brand new one. And uh, if we can get this thing ready for paint, 
Hopefully by next weekend I get the door jams painted. I get the parts all jammed in. And we can put this thing back together. And then paint the outside of it in a week or two. So Thanksgiving's coming up. So that's going to tie up a little bit of my time with the holidays and stuff. But we're going to keep trying to push out some videos. Once this thing's together. Uh, today after this is done I'm going to try to see if I can get a, a line cleared out. And put the steering box in. I'd like to get this thing so I can steer it. I'm not sure I can do that today. But we're definitely going to give it a shot. And see what happens. So for now let's get the body work done. And get this thing ready for paint. Now the fender's done, we're going to hit on to the quarter panel. Uh, just a note on sanding. Uh, when I'm done with the block sanding, I go over all my edges, all my corners. And any spots I see that are left over that have a little bit of a black on them, I don't want it to show. And you sand all those edges. Uh, just a note though, so I can do this in camera. All right, when holding your sandpaper and you're sanding, see my fingers? You sand that way, you're going to leave a mark. Now, those are going to leave grooves in the paint. Even close together, there's still grooves in the paint. How you want to sand it is sideways. Sideways. No grooves. So, keep that in mind if you're going to do some hand sanding. Up and down... Along, the, the, along your hand, it's going to leave grooves in your paint. And that's going to be wavy if you leave that. You want to go side to side just to keep it a nice smooth finish. Now that the body's all sanded, the jams are sanded, the motor's in the car, we're moving forward now to get the doors painted. Uh, what I want to paint is the insides of the doors and the door jams on the car. As you can see, these are already been scuffed with a red scuff pad, but I still need to do the insides of the doors, the hood and the trunk. So we're going to wrap this video up here. And we're going to, next video, we're going to get that stuff all prepped and ready for paint. I ordered some more paint. Uh, I wanted to put a, uh, a, a black candy over the red that I'm going to paint this car to make it a little darker. Uh, you'll see that probably in the next one or two videos. Uh, so as soon as the paint comes in, I can start doing some testing with it and see what I like. Say the... The black cherry itself, it was okay, but I just wanted it a little bit darker. So I'm going to go with a black candy over it and see what we can do to make this car definitely special. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, please hit the like, subscribe, notifications, leave a comment. I really enjoy the comments. Uh, and well, you know, we'll catch you in the next video. Uh, thank you very much.